Hello and welcome back to Obcast. Today we're going to be talking about vaginal breech birth and hopefully just covering some of the minor background information as well as a simplified approach in case you're ever encountering this in your non-obstetric practice. So a few points on breech presentation. By term or the end of pregnancy, about 3% of women will have a breech presentation. It's far more common at earlier gestations where the baby has more room to move, but it's really only of relevance when you get to the late third trimester. And most management decisions, as you'll see later, are typically made from around 36 weeks onwards. There's several types of breech presentation, and there's some pictures there just to demonstrate the difference. There's a complete frank and footling breech. Now, these types of breach do have management implications and mainly revolve around the risk of cord prolapse due to how much or little the uh, breach is able to engage with the maternal pelvis. But for the most part, it's beyond what we really need to know in non-obstetric practice. There is higher morbidity associated with breach presentation and that's due to things like a higher incidence of preterm birth, congenital malformations and birth asphyxia from a more complicated delivery process and then postnatal things such as screening for um, congenital hip dysplasia is quite important in these babies. Mentioned previously around 36 weeks um, there's generally discussion around some various management options and they really are an elective caesarean section, a planned vaginal delivery or an external cephalic version. And that last option, an ECV, is where typically some tocal isis is given and the baby is manually turned within the maternal abdomen. And that has around a 50% success rate, a bit higher in women who've had a baby before and a bit lower in uh, women who haven't had a baby before. But there are more factors in play that might increase or decrease the likelihood of success. Just wanted to mention briefly presentation of the fetus is which part essentially is um, abutting the cervix and it's typically diagnosed with the abdominal palpation and Leopold's maneuvers traditionally but I think increasingly in the age of point of care ultrasound especially people a bit less experienced they are likely to find a lot more success using an ultrasound to assess for fetal presentation. You can see here both a long and transverse section of the maternal abdomen just showing a round hyperechoic fetal skull that's at the bottom of the maternal abdomen and really that is what diagnoses a cephalic presentation and um, and I think this can be very useful and it's a very easy skill to learn. If we look at a couple of examples of breech presentation in this one we have feet presenting at the cervix this is a footling breech and in this case, it's not clear which subtype of breech it is, but it's clearly not a head down at the maternal cervix. So these are both breech presentations. And in actual fact, in earlier pregnancy, which we've mentioned is more common. Now a little bit on vaginal breech birth. It isn't common. And probably only 5% of breech presentations will undergo a breech vaginal birth. And I guess historically this comes from a randomised control trial almost 20 years ago now known as the term breach trial which was terminated early for increased perinatal risk in the planned vaginal breach birth group. It was a trial looking at outcomes after either a planned caesarean or planned vaginal breach birth. Now this did trigger a lot of debate and there was some controversy over the validity of the trial and there have been some other findings in other trials, but these have really been better selected cases and women with babies deemed more suitable for a successful vaginal breech delivery. And I think what's probably not able to be argued is that since the term breech trial, there really has been a degree of skill loss across the maternity profession, whether that be with midwives or obstetricians there. Due to the a long period of reluctance there really has been some skill loss. Now on a positive note there are some specialized vaginal breach centers 
which do offer screening and patient selection for those appropriate for vaginal breech birth with, uh, with really good uh, safety data and success rates. And I think that's something that will allow the training of future and current maternity care providers. I just wanted to increase this table just to mention some of the factors that can be suggestive of a more likely suitable baby for a vaginal breech birth. And as you can see, the trends here really are, you know, a French be a frank breech in a multiparous woman with a normal size baby and a reasonably smaller size head are things that tend themselves to be more successful. And this is this breech score is just an example showing some of these trends. Now in terms of vaginal breech birth, I really just want to impart some things that were taught to me by an older obstetrician. And the key things I were told were hands off the breech and stand the woman up or on all fours. Now back to the first point on hands off the breech, I was told the best way to deliver a breech is standing in the corner of the room sitting on your hands. I guess the concept is, especially with the assistance of gravity, a lot of women will deliver a breech without any intervention. And by putting your hands on the breech, you're likely to trigger a bit of an extensor response in terms of the fetal body and even fetal head, which we know from all mechanisms of labour is associated with, with, the ba with the baby not progressing through the birth canal well. As a completely flexed baby, whether cephalic or breech presentation is what's required for uh, a successful and smooth trip through the birth canal. Now just in terms of the mechanism of a breech labour, really the breech, which is, we could just consider at the bottom at the moment, descends and rotates through the birth canal, much like a cephalic presentation. And the hope is, by not touching it and by assisting gravity, you'll actually have a successful breech birth. And if that's all you take home from today, then that's been very useful. I'm going to show a couple of videos and pictures just to highlight the process. There's some limitations with the videos. Obstetric mannequins can be a little bit tricky. Um, so some of the manoeuvres aren't perfectly represented, but hopefully they just show the principles and we'll talk through them as we go. This video here is just going to show the spontaneous birthing of the breech. And like a cephalic presentation, it's very reasonable to just let the woman slow down a little bit at this point to allow some perineal stretching. It's useful to just guard the baby and be there to support the body in case there's a precipitous delivery. But in general, we're hands off the breech. Now, the, the legs will often flick out or can be flicked out and then the baby will start to descend and the best way for this to happen is with the with the back facing up or at least the back facing the maternal belly. Now sometimes the shoulders can be tricky this is called a love sets maneuver where by putting your hands on the bony parts of the fetus only you rotate the shoulders to an AP diameter it just allows the delivery of the shoulders and the arms. Now this model's a little bit tricky and stuck it's usually a lot easier than that but again, just a gentle rotation with hands on bony prominences to prevent solid organ injury and then a gentle delivery of the shoulders. The last maneuver is called the Munro Smelly Vite maneuver. And in this case, we're just allowing a flexing and delivery of the head. So two fingers go on the malar prominences of the child's face. Historically, they were in the mouth. And then the baby's just rotated up and onto the mum's abdomen. Now the last thing I want to talk about is really entrapment of the after coming head and this is the real risk with vaginal breech birth. The concept here is that in a cephalic presentation, i.e. head first, the head is the largest fetal diameter and therefore the cervix needs to completely dilate to facilitate delivery of the head and therefore the body typically follows through the cervix without problem. In a breech delivery and particularly those that are preterm, the body can be actually delivered before the head is able to pass through the cervix and this can lead to a very difficult delivery and it can cause significant fetal hypoxia. That's really the main 
concern with vaginal breech birth and it can be very complicated and difficult to manage and even involve making an incision or using scissors to cut the cervix on both sides and it's definitely beyond the scope of this talk but just a final point I wanted to make sure people were aware of really highlighting the main risk and concern for vaginal breech birth. Now that's all I wanted to cover in this talk I hope that was helpful remember hands off the breech and I hope it's something you don't encounter in your practice and if so I hope you've got lots of help available. Thanks very much for listening and I hope that was useful.